Welcome to CED Mo's Boz online video series. Today is Connected Components Workbench Programming Part 2, Adding and Controlling a Drive. Okay, so uh, this is where we left off in uh, part one of this video, of this video series with CCW. Um, so this, we just, in part one, we added a controller. Um, in the actual video, it was a Micro 850. Um, I have since obtained an actual uh, demo unit, physical unit, uh, that's an 870, so we've changed that to an 870, and we wrote this few lines of code. Um, in this part of the video, we're going to add a drive to the project and show you how you can program that drive through CCW, um, and then we're going to add uh, the ability to control that drive from the controller over Ethernet. So it's um, over here on the right side, we have the device toolbox. So we're going to open that up, and we're going to click Drives, 520. The drive I have here is a 523. We're going to add that to our project. Um, right, so this screen is the first thing to pop up. Um, the peripherals I do have to add. So this peripherals are um, add-on cards to the, uh, to the drive itself. Um, and I know that mine has the... Ethernet IP module in it. So I'm going to hit that and then hit OK. And it's going to create my drive. So this is the main screen for the drive. And as you can see, we can select parameters here and program any of the parameters we need to from here. Uh, diagnostics and things like that. These will all make more sense when we go online with controller. The other thing I wanted to point out was wizards here. This, these startup wizard is a very, very nice tool uh, when pulling a drive out of the box. Uh, and instead of going through the startup on the HIM module, this startup wizard could step you through the main steps without you having to hunt down any parameters. Um, so it, as long as you just keep hitting next, um, you can select all the simple for simple motor control. Uh, since there's vector, do you want to go forth per hertz? Um, your uh, voltage information. And then your motor nameplate data. You can put all that in. Um, stopping mode. So all these basic um, things that you would do on a normal drive startup, you can just step right through. So this is your Excel, Excel D cell and your max frequency, things like that. So instead of trying to find parameter 67 and set it to this value, and then parameter 62 and set it to this value, it's all very easy to do through here. The drive uh, speed reference, we're going to actually set to uh, the network. And then digital inputs. Um, this is my favorite part. These are the actual terminal numbers on the drive. So if you wanted to wire uh, run forward to, to the drive, you would put it on terminal two. And then this parameter would be what was on terminal two. So no, again, no more, you know, um, searching through the, the drive parameters to try to find out what you want. And then also same thing with the relay outputs. It shows you which ones normally open, which ones normally close on the terminals. And we're going to hit finish. We weren't online with the drive. We didn't make any actual changes to the drive. I do have a 523 sitting here. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to connect. And I am going to just connect to the drive. I know that my drive is right here at dot four on the ethernet. So out of the box, obviously, unless you have a managed switch uh, with port persistence, the drive is not going to have an IP address. So you have a couple options there, either a use a, a managed switch that would assign it its IP address, um, or you can, uh, you put the IP address in using the parameters on the drive. Um, and the HIM module. So you put your um, your IP address and your subnet mask in that way, and then you can come to this step and program the rest of the drive. Um, you can also uh, boot P these drives using the old boot P method, um, and you can also go in over a serial connection using a uh, um, the uh, drive serial or uh, USB to serial DPI link, but. So in this case, my drive already has an IP address. If you need help setting the IP address of a drive, refer to the manual or call uh, your local distributor or tech support. So here we go. I know that my drive is .4. It's showing up in 
my RS link, so I'm going to hit continue. It's going to connect to the drive and check the parameters compared to what I have, which are all the defaults. So we'll just give that a second. So now what it's telling me is, oh, look, the project, my project is different from the physical drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and use the physical drive. So I'm going to pull all of the parameters off the drive for now. Um, and it'll tell you everything that's different if you want it to. But we're going to go ahead and use the physical drive. And so there we go. The green bar shows up here. Um, we are connected to the drive. It shows our IP address and it shows our live parameters. The next thing we're going to do, uh, the next part of the video is we're going to set up, we're going to step through the startup wizard to set up our network. Okay, so to step through our wizard, we're just going to click on wizards down here. And this startup wizard, you can do this offline um, if you don't have the physical drive. Um, you can even do it um, with just, if with the 520 series, if you just have the control module off the front of the drive, you can also do it with that um, using the transfer utility. Um, but we have a whole other video about that. Uh, but since we have the drive here and I'm able to connect to it, I'm just going to stay connected and walk through the wizard. So we're going to click start. And it's just going to step us through all the stuff we would normally do. So if we want to reset the parameters back to default, we could do that. I don't want to do that because I don't want to lose the motor information of the motor that's in my demo box here. So I'm just going to leave them alone for now. Um, so, so all this as well, um, this can all be changed as well. But uh, like I said, I have a demo box here, so I don't want to mess too much with the power side of things. Uh, nameplate data, I'm going to leave alone. Uh, if we had a break resistor, which I do not, you could enter your break uh, resistor information here. Uh, so a direction test. So here, if you're hooked up to the drive, you can give it a reference uh, to watch the motor spin and just to let it know, okay, did we go the right direction or not? And if, if not, it'll reverse its polarity so that it does go the right direction, but we're good. Uh, the next step would be to do an auto-tune. Um, we're not going to do that here, but if a static tune uh, and rotate tune, rotate tune will move the motor, so you want to make sure it's uncoupled. Static tune will just um, not move the motor, just read the windings, the resistance. Ramp rates, um, so 0 to 60 hertz, 5 seconds. That's pretty standard, but if you had any changes to that, you could set it here. All right, so our speed reference, we're going to leave this at network because uh, we're going to control this over the Ethernet. But if you wanted to control it from any of these, you would select that here, as well as your other three references if you're switching between them. Um, our digital input. So here, our start source, I want to I want to make sure that's at network, because uh, again, we're going to use the Ethernet to control this thing. We want to ramp or coast or break for our stop mode. And then if we were using hardwired control, we could set all that up here. Um, or we could actually just set all these to not use. So just in case anyone tries to wire the drive up, it won't work. Um, and then our, our output, um, relay output, we're not using that, so we could just leave that as default. So and then we get to the end, and it'll tell us what our pending changes is. What did we do? Um, so it, changed, it tells us that these parameters are going to be changed when we click Finish. And there we go. So we're ready to go. We're ready to start our drive over the network. So the next step will be putting the programming into the controller to control the drive. So in order to get uh, network control of the drive, um, we're going to come over, back over to our controller, um, expand that out, come to our program here. Um, so you'd see we're not going to need any of this. So this, this program was written uh, assuming we were using hardwired control. So we're actually going to just wipe all of this out. Okay. And normally in, say, if you were using a Logix controller, um, a Control Logix, Compact Logix, they would have the add-on profile for the drive that would make it super easy to control the drive over the network. Um, CCW does not have add-on profiles, but what we do have is a very large library of uh, pre-built um, user-defined function blocks, as they're called, um, in the Rockwell sample code library. So what's the Rockwell sample code library? This is the Rockwell sample code library. So you can find this page very easily by just Googling 
uh, Rockwell Sample Code Library, um, or you can use the link here. Uh, but they have a lot of predefined screens, um, function blocks, and things that aren't included in the base software that you can download here. So uh, for this case, we're going to do PowerFlex Micro 800 Ethernet. You see the first thing that comes up here is a user-defined function block of Ethernet communications for all these PowerFlex series drives. I've already downloaded this. Um, I've downloaded it to a file uh, in here. This, this is the file that will download. It will extract this zip file. You extract the zip file and open this up and then you get this file, which is a 7z file. And then what do you do with that? Well, I'll show you. You come over here, right click on your controller and select import. Import exchange file. We're going to browse for that file. Right there. It's going to tell us what it's called, and we're going to import it. So now you can see under user defined function blocks, we have this RA PowerFlex ENET status command. So over here in our program run one, I'm going to insert a, well, let's first, let's get our toolbox out here. And we're gonna drag a instruction box over here. And then in the instruction box, I'm just going to search for that RA up here, and there it is. We're going to put this block. So this block, um, if you want to see the code underneath, you can double click over here and see the they've written an instruction text underneath. Um, pretty much what it does is it just writes a lot of message commands back to the drive, or a couple of message commands back and forth to the drive uh, to retrieve and set all of this information. So it's already done for you. All you need to do is handle the inputs and outputs and the tags going in. Uh, if you hover over the block, as you can see, let me bring that back up, it'll tell you what each of these are as far as data types as well, these tags. So what you need to create to be able to get the information into and out of the drive. Also, if you go back to your original folder where the 7z file was, there's this PDF that comes with it. It's just a short instruction set uh, shows you an example and then a description of what each tag does. So we're going to minimize that. Oh, and it also, yeah, back at the bottom, it tells you what you have to set to allow the, uh, the drive to accept the Ethernet command. So back over here, um, you would want to create um, a lot of tags to do this. I've already done that to save time. Uh, I've created a lot of tags under our, our global variables. So you can see I have my drive IP update rate and things like that already created. But what I wanted to show you first is the only thing you need to do to get information out of that drive is to put the drive IP address in. Even, so if you don't even want to control the drive, you just want to know all of the outputs, we can do that by simply putting in here, we'll go to our global variables and our drive IP. We're gonna put that in there. We're gonna save and come back over and download to our controller. I just wanna show you this first. So it's gonna compile the program. We're gonna download with project values. building our project here. All right, so we're downloaded and we're gonna go ahead and execute the program. Okay, so now all we have, so there's our drive IP address that I put in that tag and all of our, the feedback from the drive, we're getting all of that information. So we're getting our DC bus voltage uh, we're getting, there is a fault code. That's going to be a comms loss since I downloaded to the, uh, to the controller. We lost our comms for a second. So we do have a, a fault code here. Uh, we do have our, what is our drive type? Um, we can go 
check on that. Um, we have that there's, uh, there's no error on the function block itself, um, and we're good to go. If we reset the fault on the drive, we could control it over the Ethernet, which I'm going to go ahead, uh, just for time's sake, I'm going to fill in all of our tags here so that we can control this drive, and then uh, we'll see how it works. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone offline with the controller, and I've put tags in all of these um, uh, points here so that we can control the drive and get everything out. Now, you don't need to put um, a tag in each one of these. Um, if you only want to start, stop the drive, clear a fault, and know if it's running, then those are the tags you create. Uh, the only reason to create the tags is that so you can get the information off to an operator through a touch screen um, or another or, or lights, things like that. So you need to be able to move that information from the block into a tag so that you can use it throughout the program. Um, so that's the reason for doing it. Now, in this case, I went ahead and put a tag in every spot so that it's just done and we can go ahead and monitor each one of them if we wanted to, as well as bring that into the touch screen later uh, as we feel we want to in part three of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and download this to our controller. Doing a run. Okay. So here is our drive block. Again, we're getting all this information into these tags now if we wanted to. And I created these as global variables so that we can pull them out throughout any program. Uh, you can't create them as local variables if you're just using them inside that program, just like logics. Uh, but you can see we have all our values in here. Um, what I want to do is come in and give us uh, a start command here. So if we issue a start, it's not going to start. <laughs> you know why? Because we have a fault on the drive. So we have to take that away, uh, issue a stop, just to make sure that we are stopped. Um, and then we're going to come in and clear our fault. So again, our fault code goes to zero, our drive isn't faulted. So let's try, first of all, before we get too far ahead, let's give it a, a speed reference here of 60 hertz, or we'll do 45. So then we'd see 45 in our speed reference. We're gonna start. And okay, so our output voltage, we're seeing output current, and there's our speed feedback. We are at our reference. We're getting all the information live from back of the drive. And we're doing it at a 10 millisecond update rate. That's what our update, you can slow that down or speed it up as your network will allow you. Uh, and so that's if we change our command speed, that's the wrong one. We need our speed reference, yep, right here. Drive will slow down all of our information. So there you have it. We are now controlling a drive uh, over ethernet with a micro 8, 8, 870 in this case. Uh, just by using this block right here uh, saves us a ton of programming time. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and add a power, or, or I'm sorry, a panel view 800 to the project. And we're going to control, so how we can control the drive through this block using the panel view 800. Thanks for watching. Once again, thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out future and current videos by subscribing to CED Mosbaugh Electric Supply on YouTube or visiting www.mosba.com slash media. Thanks again.